Neurology quiz number 20. What is neurocysticercosis? It is a disease of the nervous system caused by the larval form of tinea solium or pig tapeworm, which is common in Asia, Africa, South and Central America. Normally, pig is the intermediate host and harbors the larval form, while man is the definitive host and harbors the adult worm. Undercooked pork is consumed by man, which contains cysticerci that develop into adult worms in the human intestine. Adult worms then lay eggs, which are excreted in the human feces, are consumed by pigs and carried to the animal's muscles, where they mature. Neurocysticercosis is caused by accidental ingestion of tinea solium eggs by humans, most commonly in food and water, contaminated by human feces. In the stomach, larval cysts are released from the eggs and they pass into the bloodstream and are carried to the brain. Cysts lodge in the cerebral cortex as well as the subarachnoid space and ventricles. Cortical involvement causes epilepsy, the most common manifestation of neurocysticercosis. Involvement of the CSF pathways causes subacute meningitis with headache, vomiting, and cranial nerve palsies. Obstruction of the CSF pathways by cysts can cause hydrocephalus. Depending upon the stage of the disease, MRI brain may show a minimally enhancing cyst containing a scolex or larval head an enhancing cyst without a scolex, an enhancing nodule, and finally a calcified nodule. CSF shows lymphocytic pleocytosis and may also show eosinophilia. A CSF ELISA test is available for diagnosis. Treatment is with antiparasitic agents, albendazole or praziquantel. Corticosteroids are given before antiparasitic agents as death of the cyst can be associated with a vigorous inflammatory response and cause raised intracranial pressure and cerebral edema. Hydrocephalus may need shunting. Epilepsy requires long-term treatment with anti-epileptic drugs. This is a graphic showing the normal life cycle of the pig tapeworm and the mode of occurrence of neurocysticercosis. This shows the radiological appearances at various stages. A is an MRI showing cysts containing a scolex within the cyst. B is an MRI showing an enhancing cyst without a scolex. C is an MRI showing enhancing nodules and D is a CT scan showing calcified nodules. What are the types of medication induced myopathies? These are as follows. Necrotizing. This is most common with statins. Mechanism includes reduced production of coenzyme Q10 by inhibition of HMG coenzyme A reductase. Statin toxicity can be increased by drugs such as cyclosporin. Necrotizing myopathy can be caused by other lipid lowering agents like gemfibrosal and by labetalol. Inflammatory. Statins can also cause immune necrotizing myopathy associated with anti-HMG coenzyme A reductase antibodies. This does not improve on stopping statins and requires immunotherapy. Inflammatory myopathy is also caused by deep insulamine and immune checkpoint inhibitors like pembrolizumab. Number three is amphiphilic. Amphiphilic molecules contain hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions and they disrupt lysosomes leading to formation of autophagic vacuoles in muscles and nerves hence they can be associated with neuromyopathy examples include chloroquine hydroxychloroquine and amiodarone number four is antimicrotubular medications that disrupt assembly of microtubules can interfere with lysosomal function and lead to formation of autophagic vacuoles in muscles and nerves with the development of neuromyopathy. Examples include colchicine and vincristine. Number five is mitochondrial. These are agents that interfere with mitochondrial function. Examples include anti-HIV medications like zidovudine and the muscle biopsy in such patients shows ragged red fibers. Other antiretroviral agents like lamuvudine and telbuvudine may have a similar effect. Number six is miscellaneous. 
Steroid myopathy can be related to increased catabolism or impaired synthesis of proteins. Exposure to prednisone 30 mg per day for four weeks or more or its equivalent confers the highest risk. Fluorinated steroids like dexamethasone and betamethasone are especially likely to cause myopathy. This is a muscle biopsy with HND staining showing vacuoles in the muscle fibers in colchicine myopathy.